And we send our prayers and condolences to the family of 59-year-old Betty Patan, uh, whose home uh, on the Vernon Burgard Parish line uh, was struck by the tornado. Uh, we know that there are a number of damaged homes, electric poles, uprooted trees, and so forth throughout Beauregard, Vernon, and Webster parishes. Uh, one woman uh, whose home was destroyed in Webster was taken to the hospital where she was treated and released. Obviously, the, most of the damage is here in Repeats Parish, where approximately 100 homes have been impacted, 10 uh, practically destroyed, another 40 very, very seriously damaged, uh, and then the others uh, range uh, all the way from, from serious damage uh, to very light damage. Uh, one of the, uh, I'm sorry, both detention centers here in Repeats uh, Repeat Parish lost power. Uh, they, they did not have to evacuate any of the inmates uh, from those detention centers, but they are operating on generator power at this time. Uh, one of the centers is currently on fire watch pending the return of power. Uh, the Office of State of Fire Marshal, the Fire Marshal's Office, I should say, is on the ground and assisting uh, as needed. You probably know that three schools were uh, heavily impacted with major damage, those being the Hope Baptist Christian Academy uh, and the For My Child Learning Center. We also had a public school yesterday, an elementary school, uh, the Mabel Brasher School that was severely impacted and damaged, and that school is not open today. We do have Superintendent Jeff Powell uh, of the Repeats Parish School System who's here uh, to answer questions about that school uh, I know that, uh, that no, no announcement has yet been made, but if you've got questions about public schools here, uh, you'll have an opportunity to address those to Superintendent Powell uh, when I finish uh, speaking. In fact, you can address any question to me or to the folks behind me, depending on uh, the nature of the question. We do know that children were at the Hope Baptist uh, facility yesterday when the storm hit. Uh, thanks to the teachers and administrators, they had a game plan in place uh, just in case of a, dis a disaster um, uh, struck, and it proved effective and life-saving for them yesterday. Uh, students were taken from the school to the main uh, sanctuary and then actually were instructed uh, to get under the pews for their protection. There was only one minor injury, uh, which when you put that into perspective, if you see the damage done to that school and know how many uh, children uh, and faculty members were there, you would know that that is a tremendous uh, blessing. Uh, ironically, the school actually had a tornado drill planned for this week. Um, I want to acknowledge the school leaders for their foresight and the seriousness uh, that they displayed yesterday, uh, and this demonstrates why having a game plan for yourself and families and schools and businesses is critical. Uh, we will start the, uh, the assessments for both uh, public assistance uh, and uh, private assistance uh, preliminary damage assessments have already started. Those are going to be ongoing for a period of time. Certain thresholds have to be met uh, before assistance is available. I am not yet able to tell you with any certainty at all whether they will be met. We know that it's about $6.5 million for public assistance in terms of what the state has sustained, uh, and it also has to be uh, over about $475,000, for example, here in the Peach Parish for public assistance. Um, we do know that, uh, that there will be shelters open tonight. We're expecting very cold weather. It'll be in the mid-20s uh, here in Rapids and across central Louisiana uh, so that we will have uh, shelters open tonight both in Powell and here uh, in the Alexandria area as well. Um, over in Pineville, it is going to be the Keys Park Community Center, uh, which actually opened last night. It will remain open tonight. Uh, and then. Uh, in Alexandria, they're in the process of opening. It is not yet open, so we don't know, want people going there yet, but the Bolton Avenue, Avenue Community Center, it will be open tonight. Uh, so we know that there are individuals who don't have power, and they're not going to have the ability to stay warm. Most of these people will go to the house of a neighbor or friend uh, or relative, uh, but those who need to can go to these shelters in order to make sure that they stay warm and have uh, food to eat. There's a lot of hazards out there. Every down electrical wire should be treated as if it's live. We know that people, when it gets cold in situations like this, they do, they do things to stay warm that sometimes are not safe and cause house fires. We need people to be very careful about that. And also, people will sometimes uh, use generators uh, in a way that causes them to suffer carbon monoxide poisoning. And we don't want that to happen either. So make sure if you run a generator that the generator is outside. Uh, and that you do that as, as safely as possible. 
We have uh, crews all over the place uh, trying to restore power. We have uh, still have first responders out there working. Now is not a good time to be sightseeing and going to the areas that have been most heavily impacted because they're still clearing debris from the roads. The, the power lines are down. And these emergency uh, vehicles and these crews need to be able to get in and out so that power can be restored to as many people as possible as fast as possible. Uh, we also need to make sure people pay attention to the local news and what uh, local elected leaders are telling them uh, for their own safety and what they can expect in terms of when power will be restored um, and other announcements that may happen uh, at, from time to time as, as they have information to, to put out. Uh, GOSEP has information to help you put a plan together, um, and that's something I can't stress enough. Uh, everybody needs to have a plan before a natural disaster strikes. Uh, we should pray for the best and, and certainly prepare for the worst. Uh, and you can visit getagameplan.org for more uh, details. So with that, I'm going to take questions. And, of course, if you have a, a question that's directed to the, the mayors or to um, – any of the local officials or to the superintendent of education, please go ahead and make that known as well. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Cassie Sherman with News 15. Looking at the damage firsthand yeah. um, and seeing it, what was your first initial thought? Well, first of all, my initial thought is knowing there was only one fatality. And by the way, that's tragic and it's sad, and, and, and we need to pray uh, for the family of the lady in Vernon Parish who was killed. But when you see how widespread and catastrophic the damage was, the fact that only that one person was killed and no one seriously hurt uh, or killed here in, in where Peace Parish, that, that is a blessing. And, and I will tell you, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, people are, are taking seriously warnings they're getting from the National Weather Service, but also the alert that people are getting over their mobile phones. Uh, people, are, people are paying attention to those and then going to the interior of their houses and in, in, in sheltering in the bathrooms. Uh, we know, for example, at a local convenience store here, uh, that customers and, and people who were working at the convenience store actually went into the cooler in order to be in the safest possible place. Uh, and and that, that store was just completely uh, torn apart. Uh, so, so very thankful that we didn't have more uh, loss of life and serious injuries because while we saw a lot of devastation here in Rapides Parish, we didn't see anything that can't be replaced. Uh, now it's going to take a while and people have to be patient. Uh, and it's going to be a while before everybody's lives are back to normal. Uh, but but everything that we saw today can be fixed. Governor Dion Guillory, NBC Local 33 in Baton Rouge. I know you said the assessments are in the very early mm -hmm. stage. Um, once those come in and they meet the threshold, are you going to ask for federal help? Well, if if we meet the threshold, absolutely uh, we will. Uh, and it's just too early to know whether that's going to happen. I, I, I'm certain that the parish, Rapides Parish, is going to meet the $475,000 threshold. Mm -hmm. But we also have to meet one. Uh, statewide as well, and it's six and a half million. So if we don't get above six and a half million dollars worth of damage to public property, uh, then then we know that we're not going to qualify for that assistance. But the preliminary damage assessments have started; uh, they're going to be ongoing until they're complete, and we'll we'll know more. But rest assured, if we qualify, if we meet the threshold, we'll be, we will be seeking assistance uh, on both on the public side and on the private side. Any other questions? I have another question. It's yes, kind of sir. along the lines of hers, but you, you know, you were taking the tour and you were hearing the stories, uh, particularly one um, where there was a worker in a place and he was holding on to the steel beam yeah. uh, while the storm was coming through. Walk us through your thought process in hearing stories like that and how that this particular storm um, may be similar or different from previous tornadoes or possible tornadoes we've seen. Well, the, you're referring to the story of someone who was a parish worker, and they were working at the parish maintenance barn. Um, and, and if you saw the condition that barn after the tornado uh, tore it apart, you know how lucky all of those people are to be alive. Uh, but he was actually in that open bay area as a, as a maintenance technician um, and was able to hold on to a beam and, and, and make sure that he didn't uh, get blown out of, out of the building. And, and, of course, he survived to tell the, the story. But we're going to have stories like that from a number of individuals uh, who were able to survive uh, this this particular tornado, uh, despite the fact that it was a very, very strong uh, tornado uh, that, that came through a very densely populated area. And you can just look through here and you can see all, all the damage. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I assume that this is the same as everybody else. I'm just very, very thankful 
uh, that we're looking at buildings and cars and travel trailers and, and mobile homes and, and so forth that have been destroyed here but not human life. And very, very thankful for that. And I encourage people to make sure that, that they put themselves in the best possible posture to withstand uh, whatever a storm can throw at them by making sure they have a game plan to begin with, but also by, by listening to the weather service. And when that phone activates and tells you there's a tornado nearby, you need to take action. Um, that is responsible probably more than anything else that we've seen over the last several years for improving uh, the way that, that we actually get through these tornadoes without more loss of life uh, and because it's it's just been tremendous. You know, it wasn't that long ago. It was earlier this spring that we went up to Ruston uh, where a very serious tornado went through our heavily populated area. Uh, unfortunately, there was one person killed there too. But when you saw the damage there, it could have been much, much worse. Uh, so, so as governor, I'm, I'm, I'm like everybody else, just very thankful that it wasn't worse than it is. But we certainly need to pray for uh, the family of the, of the lady, Vernon Parrish, who was killed, uh, Ms. Patan, and, and send our condolences to, to the family as well. And like you were talking about earlier, a little surprising, too, or shocked. I mean, it went straight through the middle of town where a lot of people were working. Yeah. It wasn't just out in the outskirts of rural areas, either. Just no, no, that's right. And, and you can see that it kind of just hopped and skipped. And, 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 uh, and you had uh, businesses, for example, in homes right next to one another. One would be very, very heavily damaged, and the other one... Uh, mm -hmm not even touched and so it's you just you never know what to expect uh, from these tornadoes uh, and I'm I for one going to be very interested to know whether this was one long continuous tornado track of 63 miles or whether it was multiple uh, tornadoes and hopefully we're going to know that uh, pretty soon well look I want to thank y'all very much and, and as we're talking the sun comes out <laughs> thank you all very much appreciate you thank you governor thank you.